Hello and welcome back to Learn JavaScript with Creative Coding. I am Dr. Abstract and if we go to the Zim site now at zimjs.com and we scroll on down to the bottom and click school we uh, have done lesson one display objects and that gets us stuff on the stage that we can see. It's always nice when we're coding when we can see things. And lesson two was configuration objects, how to configure those. And we used an object literal for that. That was a list of properties that were that matched the, the parameters. And we also saw some animation to keep your interest all excited. Yes, that was fun. Lesson three, we drop back to traditional JavaScript of functions and events. Then we talked about abstraction in lesson four uh, that helps us with code and with life. And we saw some examples of abstracting to a constant or a variable and abstracting to a function and to a class. So we saw concrete examples of those. Now we're on lesson five, arrays and loops. And we're going to see a few videos here. We'll start off with a video on arrays. So if you've just arrived, this is your first time here, you want to go back and look at those other videos. There's a few videos for each of those other lessons. And we'll, we'll see you back here in a little bit. Huh? <laughs> All right, for those of you who are ready to go, let's do it. What we're going to do, you can always come here and view the references to the lessons and do some practicing. I would recommend that for sure. But we're going to code right in an, um, an editor. And let's do that now. So we'll scroll on up, whoop, hit the Zim, and press code. And we'll copy our template. And we'll reduce this down. And in Atom, our text editor, we'll paste our template. Scroll on up, and this is lesson five we're starting now. So we will say lesson zero five. And we're looking at arrays today. We're bringing in CreateJS. Thank you, CreateJS, and bringing in Zim, which help us helps us work on the canvas, do creative coding on the canvas. And then scrolling on down, we've got a circle that will delete this stuff and will leave us with put your code here and a stage.update. And the code that we will put is an array. Now, an array is a data construct that helps us store a list of things, such as 1, 2, 3, 4. Woohoo! There is an array that is holding four numbers. So we are using what's called the array literal. Array literal and uh, you could also do this new array so here we are using the array class to give us a new array object one comma two comma three comma four but generally we use the shorter version the array literal well you know, keep that around so you remember your literals there's a few other literals too there's the object the literal that we were talking about and here's a string literal. Hello, says the string literal. Here's a number literal, a Boolean little literal. <laughs> true, it is true. <laughs> all right, those are also literals, and this is an array literal. So that's a list. Note that we put commas between the elements. And if we want, we can zog the list. Zog, that's a console.log in raw JavaScript zog the list. To do so, we would store that in a uh, const, probably const nums is equal to that. And then we can zog nums like so. And let's see what that gives us in the console. We'll open this up in a browser and F12 to see the console. And here we have it. There it is. There's the array. One, two, three, four. It's telling us. How would we access something inside the array? Well, JavaScript gives us something called the array access operator. So what we do is we put the name of the array or a reference to the array followed by square brackets. So we bump the square brackets right on the reference name. 
And those things are called the array access operator. Okay. And we ask for the index number. So uh, doesn't that make sense? Like if we want to get the first thing, it'd be nice to use it by index. So <laughs> the tricky thing is the index starts at zero. So zero is the first thing. One is the next, two, and three. So coders, coders start counting at zero. Now there is a length property of an array and the length is still four. So we don't say it has a length of three, but our index at an index of zero. Okay, it's called the index. All right, let's uh, see what happens when we zog nums at zero. So that's how we say that. We say nums at zero. All right, should give us one. Let's try it out. We refresh here. Indeed, the console now says one. So how would we get four? How would we say four in the console? Zero, one, two, three. Like so. And we refresh here. Refresh. And now it says four. Indeed, if we wanted to get the last element of an array, then we could zog nums at nums.length. Now, will that work? It's not quite right, is it? See why? What's the length of the array again? It's four. Do we want to put four here? Or do we want to put three there? Let's try it and see what this says. We refresh here. Oh, nums.length, <laughs> of course. Undefined. It doesn't have anything in it at, uh, at the index of four. So we want length minus one, like so. And we refresh here. Yay, four. Okay, so that's a property of the array, the length property. There's also a number of methods of the array. But what I'm thinking is maybe in this video, we'll just look through an array, we'll practice it, we'll see why we use arrays, we'll talk about it a bit more, and then we'll leave the methods to the next video. That might make the most sense. Okay, so we'll come back to those in another video. All right, we can also set what's in an array. We saw that we could use the array access operator to access something, but we can also change what's in the array. We can say nums at two is equal to 77, All right? And let's zog nums, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Excuse me. Now we refresh here. Now the array says 1, 2, 77, 4. So we've used the assignment operator to put 77 into the array at index 2. 0, 1, 2. So 3 is now 77. See? No 3. It's 77. Okay, so you can get and set an array with the array access operator. How would you get a random? Well, you know what, let's see some colors. Let's see something that we can actually see aside from numbers. So we would say const colors is equal to an array of colors. Blue, green, pink, orange. There we go. So there we've assigned a new array to the const colors. Now that doesn't mean we can't change the colors inside here. Const just means we won't store a, a different object inside of colors ever, <laughs> ever again. Well, this app runs, anyway. Okay, so blue, green, pink, orange, there's some colors. How about we make a circle, new circle. This is a Zim circle, and we can make it 100 in radius, and we could hard code a color like green. We'll dot center this on the stage and see if we see a green circle on the stage. 
Let me refresh. There should be a green circle on the stage. Now how would we make it pink? So access the array at 0, 1, 2 here. Well, whenever we want to use something from the array or access something from the array, we put the, the name of the array or the reference to it, colors. We use the array access operator and then we want the index 0, 1, 2. So we would put 2. Now here we are using that array when we make our new circle. We're getting the third element, second in or the index of 2. So 0, uh, oops, that's not what I want. Um, that's the wrong array completely, but there's pink circle. That's what we want. <laughs> pink circle. Close that for now. Pink circle. Woo -hoo, pink circle. Okay, so that's great. Now how would we get a random color from here? So we'll do this first with raw JavaScript. Well, you might want to know about the random number. So we can get a random number. Let's try it out. How about let ran, mm, let r, we'll call it, is equal to math.random, round brackets. So we use the method, the random method of the math class directly on the math class. That's called a static method. So there's only, we're, we only ever use one math class. We don't make a math object and do math on that. We just use the math class directly. All right, so let's see what that is. Zog R. So we'll figure out what this random number is that we're getting. <laughs> Bring back the console. We refresh. There it is, 0.81. A bit bigger for you? Oh, that's as big as the console is. Okay, so we refresh again. 0 0.06, 0 0.05, 0 0.76, 0 0.91. Can you guess what that's doing? Indeed, that's giving us a random number between 0 and 1, not including 1. It would have taken you some time to figure that one out. So it doesn't include 1. So what we want to do is get a random number that is 0, 1, two, or three. So up to, but not including three. Now, unfortunately, you can't do that. Math.random doesn't have any parameters, but we can do this. So it's close. If this is always between zero and one, when you multiply it by three, um, it's looking pretty good. Now, uh, one thing is uh, that that's fine, but we don't usually want to hard code three. What if we if we change the length of the array, all of a sudden this wouldn't work anymore unless we changed it. So we want to multiply that by the length of the array, oops, which is the name of the array, colors, dot its property, dot length. Now this is close, what, uh, but we're going to see when we look at R that there's a little bit of a problem. Let's try her out. We refresh here. 1.17, 0 0.33, 0 0.03, 0 0.5, 3.15, 3.051, etc. So you see how that's uh, that this won't really help because we need to, to get an index number. The index number is an integer. So we have to use another math thingamajiggy on it called math.floor. We don't want to round. Here's math.round because sometimes that would round up. And if we round up, then uh, we would get the actual colors.length, which is four, zero, one, two, well, four is the length. And yet we don't want an index of four. We never want R to be four. Did you get that? Uh, even if we subtracted one, we don't want to round because that would mean that the sides, the edges, don't get as much of an opportunity to be picked. <laughs> Trust us on that. We've, we've thought it out. Anyway, we use another thing called floor, and this does what we want. Floor takes off any decimals. And remember, because the colors dot length, is, or sorry, because the random number here is never one, floor takes off the decimals. This will always get us a number that is either zero, one, two, or three. It will never uh, floor to get the full length because uh, this random number is always less than one. Okay, so trust us on that. Like I said, we've done that 
a lot. <laughs> I don't blame you if you look at that and go, oh, 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 oh. This is going to give us a random number that is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And I'll show you an easier way in just a second. So I saw a 0, I saw a 1, I see a 2, I see a 3, and that's good. That's all we want. 0, 1, 2, 3. We want up to a 3. Now, what do we do? How do we get a random color? Here's us hard coding a certain index. What we want to do is take R and put it right here. So if R is 0, then we get colors at 0. If it's 3, then we get colors at 3, etc. So this is how we can pull a random color as we refresh here. <laughs> Finally, <laughs> nothing like three or four pinks to give us a little scare. And there's a couple of greens, and there's a blue and an orange. We're back at it. Uh, for all we know, we could sit here a hundred times and actually get the same color. That's what random is. It's unlikely, but there we go. So that does seem to be bringing random colors in there. Now, that's raw JavaScript. Because we like to do this a lot, especially when we're creative coding, we, we like making art, and art doesn't always look the same. We, uh, you know, we like some randomness going on here. So uh, we made this simpler, hopefully. One way is to let uh, random2 equal... What we can do is use zimrand. So zimrand does allow you to put a number in here. If you say 10, this will give you a random number between 0 and 10, including 10, and they are integers. So shall we see what uh, R2 is? So hey, R2. We're zogging R2. Cutie. Hey, R2. Beep, boop, beep. Uh, we won't bother zogging the, the R, <laughs> version one, one of R2. Uh, and where the heck are we? 60? Is that where we are? Yeah, so line 60 is telling us 8, I don't know what, 5, 2, etc. Why don't we comment out the Zog up here too. All right, so that's giving us a, a random number between 0 and 10, including 10. But we could also give it a range. This would be a random number between 5 and 10. So see how that sounds handy. We uh, like Getting a range between 5 and 10 this way is kind of tricky. You have to do all of this on the difference between 10 and 5. So you multiply it by the difference and then you would add on the minimum number. <laughs> Certainly can't be done, but it's not, you know, it's not a lot of fun to do a lot. So that's Zim, but we want uh, the colors.length here, kind of. This will get us a random number between 0 and the length of the array as an in integer but uh, it does also give us the length. So really, we uh, just one small extra step there if you're using the Zim technique, a random number, uh, 0, and the length minus 1. Okay. Now there's another way in Zim, and then you would pass R2 in there, and that would also work. There's another way in Zim. Um, let R3, I guess. <laughs> R2's brother, R3, uh, equal shuffle. Uh, Zim's got a shuffle. I said that we weren't going to look at methods of an array. Just be known, there is no array.shuffle. So we don't have colors.shuffle as a method. But we have a global Zim function called shuffle. So we can shuffle colors. What that does is it shuffles the array. Now if it shuffles the array, that means they're in oh, like the order is changed. So if we want a random number from the shuffled array, or a random thing, it doesn't matter. We just grab the first one. It's a shuffled array, so just grab the first one. So this is the technique we usually use uh, when we're coding in Zim anyway we would shuffle the array and just get the first one. So you see out of all three of these things, this is the shortest and there's less thinking, I think. I don't, I don't know. Once, once you sort of see it once, it's sort of like, oh yeah, okay, that's how we can do it. So if we put R3 in there, let's try her. 
I'll refresh. <laughs> Didn't work. <laughs> Let's try that again. Uh, shuffle colors. Colors is the array, isn't it? Uh, oh, so uh, yeah, at that point, do you see what the problem is? We're not getting a random index here, so it's even shorter than these other ones. We just put the answer right there, R3. So it's not R3, really. It's more like let color equal this. This gives us a color. So we just say color right there, like so. <laughs> My apologies. Neat, huh? So uh, it saves even more typing for us. And we refresh here, and now we're back to getting a random color. Wonderful. Woohoo! Yay! Hurrah! Hurrah! All right, I'm going to comment out that zog, and we've got great this random colored circle. However, let's try a tile. How else can we use these arrays? Let me just show you some more fun things and then we're going to talk, uh, discuss about kind of like why we use an array versus perhaps an object literal. Okay, so uh, one more fun thing here. We're going to make a new tile and in that tile we're going to tile a new circle like so and we will um, have eight of them by five of them, and then we'll give it a spacing of 10 and 10. We'll center that on the stage. There we go. So here we go. It's it's going to be a circle. Uh, well, we should give it a color or something like that. How about 50 here and a color of blue. And now we're going to see tiled blue circles. Otherwise, those would have been black. So we refresh there, and there's our tile of blue circles. Zim has this thing called a Zim V value or Z Zim V parameters, and they, they were introduced in Zim 5 V, get it? Uh, Roman numeral V. Um, and what that does is you can pass in an array, and when you pass in an array, it will randomly pick from that array. So our array was called colors, like that, and ready, we're going to randomly pick. From colors. You refresh here. Cool, huh? Yay! See better already! Creative coding! Woohoo! So we passed in an array of colors and Zim will do that for you. I'm also going to comment out the shuffle line right here because I, I want to show you a thing called a series and if we're shuffling the array then the series is going to mess up. You can also say series. So this is a Zim series function which will then take that array and any time that it runs, it will make a series of it. So that's quite different. How many of the one, two, three, four. So we've got four colors. And now instead of randomly showing those colors, refresh, we get a series of colors. Cool. Blue, green, pink, orange, blue, green, pink, orange, blue, green, pink, orange, etc. So that gives us a series. Now, if we did only have three, so no orange, save that. You'd see that her series looks a little different, <laughs> where we're getting diagonal lines coming through that. All right, is that neat? So a little bit of extra, a little bit of colorful extra for us. Woohoo! Before we go back into the theory, why do we use arrays versus, say, an object literal? So here's an array, 1, 2, 3. Here's an object literal, a colon 1, comma, b colon 2, comma, c colon 3. So they're similar in that they're a list of things, oops, <laughs> a list of things separated by commas. As a matter of fact, in other languages, such as PHP, these are both arrays. This is a linear array. And this is an associative array where we're associating the value 1 with A, 2 with B, and 3 with C. Well, I think here you can see that it would be shorter doing it this way. <laughs> so why do we ever do it this way It would be, would be a good question. Uh, well, we, we wouldn't. Uh, generally, how it works is this. Arrays store similar things. So if we have a bunch of numbers, that's great. Or even if we had a bunch of monsters, 
we could store that bunch of monsters in an array. So that's an array of monsters. Here's an array of numbers. The object literal is good for storing different things. For instance, you wouldn't, you wouldn't do this. That, that's kind of ridiculous. But an object literal would be good for storing a monster, the properties of a monster, for instance. Um, hair, I spell hair, is blue. These are properties of the monster. Teeth, 27. Um, height, well, <laughs> breath, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> breath, colon, uh, scary, <laughs> scary breath, scary, <laughs> scary breath. All right, so do you see what we're doing here? We're storing a list of things, yes, but each of those things is something different. And because there's something different, it's handy to have what it is. <laughs> For instance, you can do this in an array. We could have blue. What is nums? I don't know. We could have blue, 27. Scary. Uh, actually, if it's a Zim color blue, you don't need to string it. Scary. Okay, so that also works. We are allowed to do that in some languages, such as Java or C. You're not allowed to store different types of things in an array. They sort of are saying, hey, ho, 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 you know, that's a bad idea to do that in the first place. As a matter of fact, we're not even going to let you do it. JavaScript lets you do it, and I like that. But because uh, this still might work, you, the coder, knows that if you want to color the monster's hair, you just get the first element of the array. If you want how many teeth, you get the second element. And uh, the breath, you get the third element. But if you were to look at this, I don't know what these things are. And so the coder coming in would look at this and go, well, you know, I thought I remembered what this was, but now I don't remember. You'd have to kind of dig around a bit more. Whereas the object literal puts labels on them for you. Yay! Okay, so object literals are good for storing different types of things, where arrays, you usually store the same type of thing. So um, you could have an array, let's see, an array of monsters. If this is a monster, we'll copy that, copy. And then you could have another monster, and the other monster would have the squiggly brackets as well, and would have different properties or values anyway. Okay, and let's call this const monsters is equal to. Now, how would we access something inside here? Well, this whole monster is the first element, the zero index. So we put, to access something, we put the name of, or the reference to the array first, or the name of the array, and we'll zog it. So this is monsters. And then we use the array access operator to get the first thing, which is at zero. That represents, so that the result of that is this object right here. And if we want to get the property of an object, do you remember how? We ask for the dot. What are we getting? The teeth. There we go. So we're going to zog. Monsters is zero. So this monster's teeth property. Dot teeth. And we save this up and we refresh here. Refresh. And we have an error. Boop, 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 boop. Unexpected token. Oh, we're not allowed to put an object literal just hanging out there. Runs into problems. Refresh here. 27. 27 teeth. There, we did it. You could also set that. You could say monsters at zero dot teeth is equal to 33, and the monster would have grown a tooth. Very cool. So you can store objects, object literals inside of an array. You can even store arrays inside of arrays. Const multidimensional. <laughs> is equal to here's an array and what we're going to do one comma two comma three comma 
4, comma, 5, comma, 6. <laughs> Who's a lazy who's a lazy coder? <laughs> All right, so this is a multi-dimensional array where we have an outer array that holds inner arrays. And you can keep on going, comma, another, oops, comma, some other array that's holding A, comma, B. All right, dare we, dare we go one more level? All right, so let's see if we can access things. Don't be scared. It's multidimensional, but that's okay. Are you ready? We will zog. We, first of all, put a reference to the array. So this is multidimensional. We use the array access operator. If we wanted to get, let's try and get the number three. So that's the first thing, element zero, or sorry, uh, index zero, the first element. Now, once we do that, this whole thing, right? Oops, <laughs> dragging that. This whole thing right here represents that array. So if we've got that array, how do we access the three? Zero, one, two, of course. And we just put that right next to it, two. Because this whole thing is that inner array. So this is the inner array at two. No problem, huh? And let's check it out. Let me refresh here. 3 shows up and there it is so can you can you get this one right here Ooh. so it's the array at 0 1 so we put one there and at 0 1 2 so we put two there and did we want the a right here that's the first thing in it 0 there, do you feel like your pros? <laughs> I mean, maybe it's easy when I describe it. <laughs> Once you do it on your own, it might be a little bit harder. But it's not really that hard. It's just kind of like keeping track of um, nestings. And I am Dr. Abstract. Do you remember what nestings are? Uh, they're abstractions. A. Great. We got the A. A, you got an A. Now, I think that's a pretty good place to, to leave this. Uh, nothing like ending on multi-dimensional arrays. And speaking of multi-dimensional, how about this? And this one. Ooh, imagine running through the world like this with rings. And here's the way out. And the inverted so zombie. Okay. Indeed, that was very multi-dimensional, <laughs> wasn't it? So how are you doing here at Learn JavaScript with Creative Coding? That was your introduction to arrays. And when we come back in the next video, we will see the methods of the array. And we'll have a following video about looping. Looping is quite cool because you can loop through arrays. They work well together. So we'll see you next time. If you're still here and you've been enjoying these, of course, try and share them and give them a like on the YouTube there or wherever you're seeing them. And uh, come on in to zimjs.com slash slack and join us there. You're welcome to ask any questions. Talk to us. See what we're doing in creative coding world. Ciao.